The inspiration for today's driver video was off the back of some in-person and online lessons I conducted last week. If you understand what I'm about to share with you today, I promise you, you will improve your driver accuracy and your distance. When it comes to hitting the driver well, I don't think there's anybody better in the world than Rory McIlroy when he's in full flow. His swing is an absolute joy to watch and his ball striking is as good as anybody else's on the planet. He's particularly renowned for being a great driver of the ball and today I'm gonna to share with you his secret. As we look down at the ground to begin with, you'll notice I've got the grid drawn out here using the T-Claw product that helps me to observe and just navigate the hand and club path of the swing around me. And it's this grid diagram that's gonna help us to understand Rory's secret, and for that matter, the secret of every good driver of the ball. So when we're looking down at this grid diagram, the piece I particularly want you to pay attention to is the one that I've marked here with the stick on the ground, just to emphasize this particular piece of the grid. This represents the hand path, the travel of the hand path in the backswing and also the downswing. But I'm gonna use this particular line to reference a couple of other points in the swing that are hugely important if you want to improve your driver. So in the backswing, when the left arm is parallel to the ground, we call this position three, P3. P3 is where the lead arm is parallel with the ground in the backswing. And at that point in time, you'll notice that most good players have their arm angled inwards across their chest slightly, more or less matching this line on the ground. So at P3, the checkpoint would be that the lead arm is angled inwards, matching the grid line on the ground. You can watch a number of people swing and see that that's true of the best golfer. In the stack and tilt world, that's what we start to call hands in uh, uh, from the 10 word template. Moving the hands in an arc around the body creates a arm path or an arm plane here that's slightly across the chest. I see that in a number of amateur golfers. Golfers at P3 manage to get the arm into a similar position. What they don't do is match that on the downswing. This is the secret to the best drivers in the world. Moving in the downswing, we get back to left arm parallel. This is called position five or P5. So where the left arm is now parallel in the downswing, we want the lead arm to still match this line on the ground. That's the bit that most of you get wrong. That's the bit that robs you of your potential power. And it's the thing that makes you hit the golf ball all over the golf course with zero control. The arm should be in at P3, finish the backswing. And as we start down, it should still be angled inwards at P5. And for a kicker, a nice bonus, if you wanna keep coming down to where the shaft's parallel to the ground, we call this P6, position six, the shaft should also be angled inwards slightly. If you can hit those checkpoints in your swing, I absolutely guarantee you, your driver will go higher, straighter, and further than ever before. It's important you practice filming your swing from this down the line view to be able to check where the arm really is in both P3 and at P5 and at P6 to get these reference points and these checkpoints to match your intention. It's all well and good having the understanding of how to do this, but if you just know that this is supposed to happen and then you go ahead and still make your old swing, then we're not really making any progress. So the first thing you should be doing here is filming your swing from this down the line view to ensure that you're able to hit these checkpoints. Secondly, I would encourage you to put a stick or a club on the ground angled slightly inwards from straight, 20 degrees or so is fine, as a reference for where the arm should be in the backswing. You can keep going to the top, and you can even practice the downswing, slowly lowering those arms, lowering those hands, and bringing both the arm and the club down to try and match that slightly inward angle. These are all good drills and feels for you to start to recreate stuff you can do at home. You don't even have to go to the driving range to do this. So that can really help you. Another thing that I encourage a lot of players to do who maybe don't have the flexibility 
in them to get this thing all the way back and in behind them would be to pull the trail foot back somewhat to pull the right foot back for me helps me to just close off my hips a little bit and my shoulders to start with this even encourages a slightly more inward hand path and around me the reason this is so successful is because golf is played on this tilted angle the key to gaining more distance in the swing is to utilize this tilted angle by getting the maximum amount of depth in the swing in the horizontal plane. If we were to draw a line back from the ball along the side of the mat here and behind me, the key component to power production is how far around you the hands and the club travel. The shortest golfers would tend to have a more vertical hand plane and hand path where the shaft works too much up and down. The lines on the mat here and the grid lines and the club path and the hand path our visual guidance, they're our roadmap for moving the hands and the club around me to gain this depth in the horizontal plane, which is a huge component, as I've already said, in terms of power, production, and being able to hit the ball far. Time to hit one. Let's move the hands around. Let's move that arm in at P3. Keep it in at P5. Keep it in at P6. Match those lines. Backswing and downswing. Nice little tight draw, starting down the right side, coming back. It's normally my standard pattern there. Pretty good drive, and again, for you slicers out there, this is gonna be an absolute game changer because the idea of moving the hands and the club around you in an arc is exactly what you need, not only to minimize or even eradicate that slice forever, but to add that power back that, you've, that you're losing. So, the idea of getting the hand path inwards on the backswing, keeping it inwards on the downswing, and attacking the ball from this in, into out swing path is really the key to why great drivers of the ball are great drivers of the ball. And the next level of feedback and training that you could have would be to create this hand path in space via some barrier. This is a fantastic training aid tool that I have from iRange Sports, which creates this angled stick in the air. This angled stick is effectively elevating this grid line up into the air. And now I have some guidance for the direction of my hands, both in the backswing and the downswing. This is the absolute game changer, because for you to change your swing, you need to be able to feel where your hands are in space when you can't see them. And you need to be able to do it at speed so I've got the feedback here if I was to take the hands too vertical I've also got the feedback if I was to come down too straight and too steep I'd strike the stick this is just attached by a magnet so if I hit this it's just going to fall off there's gonna be no damage done at all so rehearsal hands in under the stick hands down under the stick and then we can hit one If you're trying to draw the ball, this would be a, the first place to start. The depth of the hand path is critical. It's a pretty nice straight push there. I didn't hit that one particularly hard. Just making sure that I get the feeling of the hand staying back in and behind me. That one was pretty good as well. Pretty straight, tiny, tiny little draw. Like I said, if you want to improve your driver, if you want to hit this ball longer and straighter than ever before, getting your hands to conform to the arc of the swing in the backswing and the downswing is exactly what you need to be doing. So those are simple checkpoints that you can look at every time you practice. It's important to film your swing often and to check that you're actually getting the results from the feels that you have because sometimes the feel and the reel don't always match up. So get your camera, make sure you're filming from down the line, check that hand path and that arm path, P3 and P5. If you get this right, I guarantee you, your driver will improve significantly. If you enjoyed the video today, guys, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the new channel, 
please hit the subscribe button as well. This is where you'll find all the videos I'm making moving forward. And as it's US Masters week, which is one of the most anticipated weeks on the golfing calendar, I'm gonna give away a free online lesson to one of you watching. All you need to do, get down in the comments. I want to hear who you think is gonna win at Augusta this week. If you get it right, I'll be selecting one of you at random to win a free online lesson with me. And if you're ready to continue your driver journey and want to explore how Stack and Tilt can help you hit the driver better than you ever thought possible, then go ahead and watch this video next, which I made on Stack and Tilt and the driver.